Let's learn how we can position items on the grid by using the grid line numbers. Grid lines are essentially lines that represent the start of, the end of, or any point between columns and row tracks. Each line starting from the start of the track and in the direction of the grid is numbered incrementally starting from number one. If I have a two column and three row grid like it shows here, you can see that the first column line is one, the second column line is two, and the third column line is three. If we're looking at the rows, they start off at one, two, three, and go down to four. On my overlay, you can see that they're negative numbers. Negative values allow you to simply move all the way down to the bottom portion of the grid. And I'll show you what this means in a practical example. Here's the file that we'll be working with. It is similar to some of our previous examples. The only real difference is that all of the grid items are using a background color of a darker teal, except for the very first one. The reason I made this different is because we're going to be using the grid lines to reposition item number one. In order to do that, I'm going to target the first item. I'll open up my curly braces and then we'll start writing some property rules. What we're going to do is we're going to use the grid row start and we're going to tell grid row start to begin at line two. Then we're going to specify grid row end and we're going to tell this to end at grid line three. If I simply save my page, when I refresh, you can see that the first item has now moved so that it starts at row line two and it ends at row line three. If we make adjustments for the column as well, by using our grid column start and grid column end, we'll set grid column start to two and the grid column end to three. If I save and refresh in the browser, you will now see that item one in regards to the column lines is now starting at line two and ending at line three. What we've done is we've repositioned item one by row and column line numbers. If an item spans only one row or column, the grid row and grid column end is not necessary. But I did want to show it to you so that we could see what happens here. If I did get rid of the grid column end and the grid row end and we save and refresh, you can see that visibly nothing changes. It is also worth noting that we can be more succinct in writing this. We can write this in a more shorthand manner. If we wanted to make this shorthand, it's going to look like this. We would simply specify grid row. And if I wanted the item to start at line two, I could just write two. I will go ahead and use shorthand for column as well. If I wanted the item to start at line three, and let's say we want it to span to line four, I would write three slash four. If only one value is provided, it specifies the grid row start or column row start. If we specify two values, as we're doing here for grid column, the first value is going to correspond to grid column start, and the second is going to correspond with grid column end. We will always separate these with a forward slash. If I refresh now, you can see that the item has moved over since we're now starting it at column three and spanning to column line four. In addition to using the grid row and grid column shorthands, we actually have a method of being able to combine all four grid row start, grid column start, grid row end, and grid column end in one shorthand method. And that is to use our grid area property. When we specify four values, the first value is going to correspond to the row start. So if I specify two here, I'm specifying I want the row start to start at two. The second value is going to be the column start. So I will have my item start at column line two. The third value is going to represent the grid row end. So we will have our item end at line three. And then the fourth item is going to represent the grid column end. We will also have this end at line three. If I save now and we refresh, you can see that the item adjusts to the new specifications. Being able to control exactly where the item exists within the grid is extremely helpful 
since this will allow you to modify and fully control where everything sits within your grid.